What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another individual skills validation video. Today we're going to be going over the needle chest decompression. If you saw the video we dropped right before this one, it was going over the occlusive dressing, right? We have our demonstrator back again, Sergeant Zuniga, right, showing y'all how this needs to be done. I'm going to be going over the criteria, you know what I mean? And uh, he's going to be going step by step as I go through this. So be sure to stay tuned. And before we get into it, like this video, subscribe if you aren't already, if you feel like you're getting valuable information and comment down below what you're most looking forward to about being a 68 whiskey or if you're nervous about it, you know, just uh, let me know something in the comment section below, all right? But without further ado, let's get to it. So guys, here we are, right? We're in the casualty. As you can see, he still has his chest seals on here. He's in the recovery position uh, from the last video. And now he is showing signs of progressive respiratory distress. So we are going to now uh, go ahead and fix that, right? So first step is to take body substance isolation, BSI, right? Which Sergeant Zuniga does. He's going to assess the ca casualty to ensure condition is due to progressive respiratory distress, secondary to torso trauma. Okay. So as you, he's... Uh, examining right he notices unequal rise and fall of the chest so the evaluator is going to then say your casualty displays signs of progressive respiratory distress on the left side right the injured side so since his uh, dressing is low and it's not uh, covering the actual site that we need to get into he's going to do the primary site and then we'll go over the secondary site in a bit so Step three is identify the second intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line uh, directly above the third rib on the injured side or the fifth intercostal space at the AAL, which is... The anterior axillary line. There you go. Directly above the sixth rib on the injured side, right? So he's going to go ahead and identify the site. He'll tell you how to go about doing that. So for the second intercostal space, what you're going to do is you're going to use the clavicle as your first rib because your first rib is technically right underneath it, Okay. I'm going to palpate it, okay? Now I'm going to go down. So this is the second rib right here. Okay, go down even further. This is the third rib. We want to make sure that the needle goes right above the third rib. We don't want to go underneath a, a rib because that's where the major blood vessels and nerves are at, right? So you can see where all these track marks are at because prior uh, uh, people that have gone through this course. So he's going, going to wipe. wipe the site, right? Small circles going outwards. And then he's going to choose the appropriate needle catheter, right? So the appropriate size is a 14 gauge needle, three and one fourth inches long, right? And he's going to remove the rubber lock cap from the needle catheter if applicable. And now he's going to insert the needle catheter over the top rib at a 90 degree angle to the chest wall, right? Not to the ground, to the head. He's going to leave the catheter in place for 10 seconds to evacuate air from the chest. So feel free to go ahead and do that. Okay. So he's going in, right? And he's going to leave him there for 10 seconds. He hears a gust of air, right? And now he's going to remove the needle, leaving the catheter in place. You will put the needle in a shelf container or back in its appropriate container to dispose of later. And uh, he's going to secure the catheter to the chest, right? So he's going to go ahead and grab his tape right here. And then, boom, boom, he's getting it ready. So a good trick is to butterfly it, right? So you can literally do that, just put it down the middle, and then you can just put it right there, and you cross over, and boom, boom. That secures it nice and in place. So now he's going to place the casualty in the sitting position or in recovery position with the injured side down, as you can see. And then he's going to verbalize continued reassessment of casualty for recurrence of respiratory distress. We're going to continue to reassess the casualty for progressive respiratory distress. All right, guys, and that is needle chest decompression. So, uh, uh, real quick, the alternate site he will go over right now. So feel free. So with uh, with the chest seals, you want to make sure that whenever you place an NCD, if you ever do for for real for the real life casualties as well, um, never put the NCD on the same exact. Uh, um, don't put it on top of the occlusive dressing because what's, so what's going to happen is a lot of this glue is going to get stuck within the catheter and it's not going to function properly. So, so if this occlusive dressing was a lot more higher, then I would put the NCD down here where the secondary site is. But so in this case, it's low, so I'm going to put it where the primary site is, which is the second intercostal space. Um, Another thing to make sure is that you want to make sure it's not within the cardiac box. It's this major box where pretty much your heart lies, uh, major nerves, and blood, 
and the blood vessels lie too, right? So you want to get the midclavicular line, so you're going to find the clavicle midway and then go down. Typically it's going to be outside of, of the nipples, but in this case he's got a pretty weird chest where his nipples are pointed out, right? But this is the proper site to do it right at. All right, there you go guys. So. Uh, really appreciate y'all tuning in for this video. We got a few more coming your way. Really hope you're enjoying this little series about the individual skills validation for what you're going to be doing in AIT. Again, this is just a general idea of what you guys will be doing. Uh, listen to your instructors, right? If they say we're fucked up and this is wrong, listen to them. They're going to teach you the way that it's expected up to their standards, how they're going to grade, things like that. This is just to help you out because I really don't see a whole lot of videos like this on YouTube. Figured, hey, we have the equipment, we have the personnel, let's get it out there to y'all. But uh, again, like this video if you found it informative subscribe to the channel if you're not already right even if you're not signed into YouTube please take the two minutes to actually sign into your account and subscribe it really helps us out and comment down below what you're most excited for uh, what other videos you want to see in the future and uh, yeah I will see y'all in the next one